Welcome everyone uh, on this special day of celebration. Uh, I am Karolina Maria Hess, a researcher of new religious movements from Jagiellonian University in Poland. And I would like to cordially uh, welcome all, part all participants of today's special meeting, members of Taiji Men Group and scholars and activists uh, who support their cause. In this month of July, um, in addition to the usual two webinars, uh, web webinars that follow the United Nations Day of, of, Days of Observance, we proposed a third seminar for a very special day. Today marks the 15th anniversary of the decision of the Supreme Court in Taiwan that uh, declares the Taiji Men defendants uh, innocent of all charges. The victory in court was a huge success, but contrary to the predictions and common sense, unfortunately, it did not end the case on, on, of the persecution of the Taiji Men. Taiji Men is seeking for justice for, uh, and freedom of beliefs for a long time now, and by long, we mean many years. The leader of, of Taiji Men, Dr. Hong uh, Tao Tsi, his wife and two disease, I mean disciples, uh, and uh, had been arrested on December 19th, 1996, as a part of political crackdown on several new religious movements uh, in Taiwan. After seven years, they had already been found not guilty in 2003 by the Seventh Criminal Court of uh, Taiwan, uh, Taipei, in the first degree. Uh, and in 2006, uh, on appeal, on July 13th, 2007, exactly 15 years ago, the Supreme Court of Taiwan put an end to the criminal case. It declared the defendants innocent of all charges, including tax evasion. Later, they will receive national compensation for the unjust detention. So after the 15 years, uh, it was finally to be over. While we celebrate this crucial legal victory, we should not forget that suffering of those uh, forget the suffering of those uh, unjustly detained uh, and all of the Taiji Mendizi who were slandered by media while their leaders were in detention or awaiting trial. Unfortunately, the consequences of the criminal case, which lasted for more than 10 years, are still haunting Taiji Men. It is even hard to imagine the reasons for which the case took such a turn that winning the court, court uh, on all fronts did not bring any compens compensation or even abandon abandonment of unjustified practices. <clears throat> uh, although in 2007, the Supreme Court awarded them totally total victory, tax authorities refused to follow the verdict, which, state, uh, which stated that there had never been any tax evasion and continued to harass Taiji men with unjust tax bills. Taiji men also continues to suffer the consequences of, of having been labeled as a cult by media investigated by the prosecutor in 1996, 97, and beyond. Our commemoration today is not purely academic. We hope that everybody, including Taiwan, uh, Taiwan's authorities, may learn from the mistakes of the past, solve the issues that are still pending, and restore justice to Taiji men. Now I would like to introduce a video, Taiji Tai uh, Men case, fighting for religious freedom at the IRF Summit 2022, the summit where global politics, religious and academic leaders got together to defend religious freedom and human rights. During the last week of June, faith and political leaders in Taiwan went to DC for the three-day IRF summit. The summit's co-chair, former U.S. Ambassador for International Religious Freedom, Samuel Brownback, explained the summit's mission of advancing religious freedom. It's the International Religious Freedom Summit. It gathers all the various religious communities from around the world to talk about religious persecution and the need for religious freedom. And, uh, and we've got a simple motto. It's religious freedom for everybody, everywhere, all the time. And that's what we're pursuing and pushing and, and really trying to build the network of groups and entities uh, to make that happen. Summit co-chair Dr. Katrina Lantos Sweat had a message of hope for those who have been seeking justice for not just years, but decades. We've had a really extraordinary summit with an amazing range of communities and people coming together. We've inspired each other, we've uplifted each other, and I hope that everybody who is here will now go back to their, their homes and their lives 
sort of newly energized to, to continue on the path of fighting for a better world, a world in which human rights, religious freedom, rule of law and justice is really available to all of our brothers and sisters. One of the groups that has been fighting for justice for decades is Taijiman Qigong Academy, a spiritual martial arts and cultural organization in Taiwan and the U.S. who maintain that the Taijiman community's religious freedom and human rights have been violated for more than a quarter of a century by what they contend are a few rogue Taiwanese officials through criminal and taxation means. Taiji Men has attended the IRF summit for two years to raise international awareness about their case. Taiji Men is here to uh, bring up the case to the Earth Summit. Um, we want to let the international uh, community know about this case. Taiwan is a wonderful country, but it's not perfect, especially on this case. It needs to be uh, actions to solve this persecution for 26 years. Despite the fact that Taiji Men was found not guilty of tax evasion, their land was confiscated by the Taiwan government in 2020 based on a 1992 tax bill. In 2007, the Supreme Court of Taiwan found Taiji Men not guilty of tax evasion, confirming that Taiji Men did not owe any tax, but Taiwan's Taxation Bureau continued to impose ill-funded tax bills that contradicted the Sup Supreme Court's verdict. In 2020, based on these bills, sacred land of Taiji Men that was intended for the self-cultivation center was auctioned off and confiscated. Taiji Men organized two panel discussions at the IRF Summit 2022 featuring international scholars to discuss the violations of two UN covenants, ICCPR and ICESCR, and human rights abuses in the Taiji Men case, calling for the Taiwan government to act. Bitter Winter magazine uh, is covering the Taiji Man case very much. Uh, we are very familiar with the problem of, uh, suffered by Taiji Man, the problem that Taiji Man is suffering since a quarter of a century is very, very serious. The only one thing that needs to be implemented is the judgment of the Supreme Court, stopping the persecution, stopping the abuse, returning the land, returning the properties that were confiscated. The panelists signed a petition to urge the Taiwan government to act on the case. I'm calling for the people to sign up the petition, asking Taiwanese government to do something to end the persecution. While in Washington, D.C., Taiji Men visited TECRO, the Taipei Economic and Cultural Representative Office in the U.S. The group requested a meeting with TECRO and restated the claims about their case. So we are here at TECRO because we want our voices to be heard. We want our case to be resolved as soon as possible. It has been going on since 1996, and it's been over 25 years now. And we want them to hear our voices, hear our concerns, and find a way to find a solution so we can end this case. We also want to call upon all the government officials inside to listen to people's voices, to fix the mistakes of themselves. Taiji Man was invited to go inside Tecro to talk to a representative. Finally, a representative came outside to receive Taiji Man's petition. Taiji Man has come to Tecro four times in the past year, but the case remains unresolved. Uh, you are muted, Carolina. Maybe someone has to unmute me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the video. Uh, and now um, let me introduce uh, our first speaker, an Italian sociologist, director uh, of Chestnut, and ed editor in chief of Bitter Winter magazine, uh, Massimo Introvini. Oh, thank you, Carolina. I suggest you mute uh, yourself. Uh, and uh, I don't need to recall uh, happily what happened in uh, July 13, uh, 
2007, the great uh, victory of uh, Taiji Men in uh, uh, Taiwan Supreme Court uh, because uh, Carolina already told uh, this story. And uh, we have also been told in the video that notwithstanding this victory, the National Taxation Bureau ignored the verdict of the Supreme Court and went on with ill-founded tax bills. But there is also a, a second uh, consequence uh, unsolved, which is the subject of my paper today of this uh, 10 years of uh, criminal case. And this is the fact that the media had slandered uh, Taiji Men, greatly affecting the well being and the peace of mind of the busy and creating a prejudice uh, uh, against uh, them. And this didn't happen because uh, of the court case per se. Court case come and go. Uh, but this happened because of the spectacularization of uh, the court case. The court case was transformed into political theater and media entertainment. I live in Italy and Italy in a way is the capital among uh, democratic states of uh, spectacularization of uh, justice. So much so that there has been a string of cases uh, uh, in the first decade of the 21st century at the European Court of uh, uh, Human Rights uh, finding against Italy uh, for this uh, mechanism of spectacularization of the criminal trial. So when uh, somebody uh, is arrested, uh, the prosecutor's uh, offices have a very bad uh, habit uh, of uh, leaking uh, uh, information, uh, in some cases true, in some cases even false uh, to the media. So there is a trial in the media, in television in particular, which is uh, parallel, but in a way precedes uh, uh, the trial in the court of law with two effects. Number one, particularly if it's a, a jury trial, uh, of course, the, uh, the, the, the juries are affected uh, by this media campaign, but even uh, if it is a bench trial, and uh, there are no justices, uh, the public uh, opinion has already declared the defendants guilty when the campaign starts. And even uh, if they are found innocent, uh, that doesn't entirely solve the problem because the monster, uh, the defendant is in the first page when he or she is arrested and uh, perhaps uh, uh, the verdict uh, declaring the defendant innocent will be on the internal page uh, uh, of the newspapers uh, and very few uh, would uh, read. So because of this situation, which is especially important uh, in uh, Italy, we have uh, had uh, uh, Italian scholars uh, who have been uh, active in uh, studying uh, uh, this uh, phenomenon of the uh, spectacularization of uh, uh, justice. And one uh, particular uh, legal scholar uh, who was uh, uh, very active uh, in this field was uh, uh, Massimo Nobili. And uh, what uh, I want to mention today of Massimo Nobili is uh, the analysis uh, uh, he made of one of the most uh, uh, famous paintings uh, in European art history about uh, uh, criminal justice. Uh, and I will now try to show you the painting I'm talking about. I believe you can see it. And uh, uh, this painting is by French painter uh, Pierre Proudhon, 
and this uh, human justice and divine justice uh, uh, pursuing the criminal. Uh, this is at the Louvre, and perhaps in a in a presentation via um, web, it's difficult to see. So I have also prepared this version. This version is the print, which is rare. This is at the British Museum in London. And I believe from the print, uh, you can see uh, what it's all about. There is a criminal who has killed somebody. And uh, there is the human justice. The human justice is very uncertain but it's looking at the divine justice. And the, the idea is the divine justice will punish the perpetrator anyway. Now, uh, the Italian scholar Massimo Nobili saw in this uh, painting of uh, 1808 uh, some uh, propaganda of uh, uh, Napoleonic code, the code uh, Napoleon, saying we can take these two figures uh, also as the uh, prosecutor, the, the ministère public, and uh, uh, the judge. And uh, he saw in this kind of propaganda for the Napoleonic principle that the uh, public uh, prosecutor is looking at the divine justice. And so he is a more moral uh, figure than the defense. Uh, uh, attorney. It has a sort of a, a, a sacred uh, function, uh, which, uh, of course, uh, also has uh, uh, some uh, consequences in the media. Uh, the media are led to believe uh, that the, uh, in this sacred show, the prosecutor should normally be believed. When the European Court of Human Rights sided uh, against uh, Italy, uh, it also said that it's very difficult to avoid the spectacularization of justice because uh, what uh, can be done is to giving uh, some monetary compensation to the defendants, as was done for Dr. Hong in Taiwan, but one cannot undo the damage done uh, to the reputation. And uh, interestingly, the European Court of Human Rights also recommended that uh, prosecutors who manipulated the media should be sanctioned and punished. And in Italy proper, this is now at the center of some uh, heated uh, uh, debate. Now, as we know, the Taijiman case is a textbook uh, we can say a spectacular case of spectacularization of justice because on December 19, 1996, uh, uh, prosecutor who raided uh, 19 Taiji Men academies and private homes of the visit, but he came with uh, the media and uh, he continued uh, to uh, manipulate the media even uh, telling ridiculously to them that he has evidence that Dr. Hong was uh, uh, raising goblins. And uh, in our webinars, we have seen so many times uh, uh, the Dizzy telling us how dramatic the consequences were of the slander campaign because they were harassed in the workplace. Uh, younger Dizzy were harassed in schools, uh, were asked to raise. Uh, goblins, uh, families and friends broke with those busy who remained in uh, uh, the movement. And all this damage done in 1996 and beyond could not really be undone by the 2007 uh, uh, Supreme Court decision. So in conclusion, I would say there are three lessons we may learn from this incident. First, that the prosecutors uh, are not infallible. They may be terribly wrong uh, and even uh, manipulative and uh, dishonest uh, as a prosecutor who was. So the media should abandon the idea uh, consecrated in Proudhon uh, famous and uh, propagandistic painting that they are instruments of divine justice and acknowledge uh, that the prosecutors are just parties in 
a criminal action and they should have no more right to be heard than uh, the defense. Second, laws should be passed and enforced to prevent uh, prosecutors from leaking uh, information about uh, a pending criminal case uh, uh, to the media. Uh, this is, of course, a delicate point because uh, uh, there is also uh, the right to freedom of information and the media uh, should be free to report about uh, uh, pending uh, uh, criminal cases, uh, but that uh, uh, does not exclude that some information should be kept uh, confidential because divulging them would uh, <coughs> prejudice uh, unavoidable the trial of the defendants in the <coughs> criminal case. And the third lesson of 41 we should learn is that uh, where uh, law exists and the prosecutors uh, uh, violate them, uh, they should be uh, prosecuted and uh, uh, punished. A prosecutor who uh, did uh, a number of illegal activities, manipulating the media uh, was just one, but he was uh, never prosecuted for his wrongdoings. In fact, he has even been uh, uh, promoted. So, Within uh, the larger scandal of the Taiji Men case, we have a scandal within a scandal, but it's the fact uh, that nobody prosecuted uh, Prosecutor Ho and uh, he was uh, uh, promoted uh, instead. And of course, uh, what happened to Prosecutor Ho raises doubts uh, about uh, Taiwan's uh, willingness uh, to deal with uh, systemic problems of uh, uh, corruption and what uh, we can see as relics uh, of its uh, authoritarian and post-authoritarian past. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Introvinia, for this uh, interesting comparative case. Um, and it's now time to introduce the next speaker. It is Marco Respinti, an Italian journalist and director in charge of Bitter Winter magazine. Please. Thank you so much. I'm between the, my reflection on uh, the Supreme Court in Taiwan ruling and being a journalist. And as we just heard from Professor Introvigne, the media may have a very nasty role in the spectacularization of um, trials and cases along with corrupted officials. So this is a very um, important lesson that we as journalists should always keep in mind along with, of course, state officials and uh, um, prosecutors and judges. We just heard that 15 years ago, the Supreme Court of Taiwan cleared Taiji men of all the false accusation that had prevented its Shifu or Grandmaster and Dizi disciples from enjoying the good life they were fundamentally, they were and they are fundamentally entitled to as human beings. It happened exactly 15 years ago on July the 13th, 2007. The persecution of Taiji Man through this false accusation had started way back in 1996, almost 11 years earlier. In total, it means that the Taiji Men case has now been going on for more than 26 years, more than a quarter of a century. This remains one of the most, at least to me, but I think objectively, the staggering aspects of the, of the whole Taiji Men case, such a long time in a democratic society. Let me do some basic math. 11 years of prosecution based on bogus accusations before concluding that these charges were false. Another 15 years of Fortage Man after its innocence was vindicated, which nonetheless it had to spend under the unbearable after effect of what the highest court in Taiwan had declared to be a false case. Again, this is bewildering. The positive side of the story, because there is a positive side of the story, if I may dare say, is that it prompts a question. 
the question is, what do we mean by the law? The answer is at least twofold. First, the law is the whole of the norms that a group of humans that we call a society gives to itself to regulate internal cohabitation and coexistence. Let me be more precise. In the first of these two meanings, the laws, plural, that the society devises for itself are the rules aim, aimed at granting a reasonable and decent measure of well-being to the members of that society. They thus open for all these individuals the possibility of a good life. The common good of a society is not just the mere sum of the individual good lives of its members, but it can never be the opposite of the good lives of all its, of its members. The second meaning of the law used in the singular this time is the normative ideal of granting justice to human, humans. Laws, plural, could be the practical way to achieve the aim of the law, singular. Laws are fundamental because they contribute to keep order in a society. And law-abiding members of a society work to the best interest of that society. The laws of a society may be the best ever, but unless its members respect them, they would never achieve their aim. The first law, in fact, of a society is morality from which the effectiveness of all codified and customary laws, plural, depends. We could comment on the notion of law for several hours, but at least two features of it are self-evident. The first is that laws, plural, are the product of trial and error. Laws, plural, are made by humans for humans and therefore are perfectible, never perfect, indeed often imperfect. The only perfect law, singular, is divine law, if you believe in it, and the natural law that directly derives from it. Some Western philosophers try to articulate the concept of natural law with no reference to a divine law, but it was never persuasive. Western thought distinguishes between two kinds of natural law, the law of inanimate nature and moral natural law found in humans. I understand that, understand that concept in the East may differ. Interestingly, Christian Irish man of letters, philosopher and novelist C.S. Lewis, in his The Abolition of Man, published in 1944, which many consider his best book ever, uses the Chinese term and notion of Tao for referring to natural law or traditionally, traditional morality. In his, and not only his, understanding, it is an encompassing law presiding on all of the universe. Lewis uses the notion of Tao within a Western, but indeed universal context to advance his case that all humans in all places and in all times believe in the same values. This happens because these values are objective and not human made. The Latin language and Roman law had two words to distinguish between the two dimension of law, singular, and laws, plural. Use, singular, indicated what is right and conversely pointed at what is wrong. Ledges, plural, meant specific practical laws which tried to reach that noble goal. I have been always fascinated by the fact that in many languages, the term that in English sounds as right means both what is just and what a human being is entitled to by human nature. It is so in German, French, Spanish, Italian, and other languages. It indicates that the human's entitlement to something is inherently just. The Latin dichotomy between use and legis does not exist as such in the English language. It may prove very hard to translate that to other languages and different cultural contexts. We should then at least ideally 
retain its deep value and apply it immediately to the Taijuman case. If the law used is created for granting the possibility of a good life to individuals, not all laws, ledges, may be up to this ideal and standard. Upholding the noble concept of the law use, humans should then change and improve and enhance laws, ledges, that are less than perfect or have proved to be inadequate or even plainly wrong. This is the high task of legislative bodies. In 2007, 15 years ago, the Supreme Court in Taiwan justly applied and translated into a ruling the idea of the law use. And that was that all Taiwanese citizens should be granted the condition to enjoy a good life. However, some pitfalls in Taiwan's judicial system allowed that the two 2007 Supreme Court ruling to remain substantially enforced for years. A large number of Taiwanese citizens, for example, Taiji Man, Shi Fu, and Dizi were unjustly condemned to the opposite of a good life through tax harassment. To uphold law use in Taiwan, which the Supreme Court affirmed 15 years ago, some laws, ledges, and regulations may need to be changed as soon as possible to stop the blatant injustice suffered by Taiji men. This should be the task of the legislative yuan, whose mandate includes avoiding and preventing injustice. I mentioned earlier two self-evident characteristics of the law. The first is that the laws are the product of trial and error, and I say that. The Taijiman case shows all too well the universal truth of this statement with emphasis on the errors. The second self-evident characteristic of the law is that no one is above the law, not the ruled and not the rulers. This is a universal truth, a universal principles held by all societies. When it is not respected, we indict a government as tyrannical, dictatorial, or even totalitarian. The Tajiman case suggests that there, are, that there are some snags in the existing Taiwanese laws. They allowed unethical, unrighteous, and unprincipled state officers to persecute Taijimen. By doing so, they damaged the Taiwanese citizen as a whole and the government in tai of Taiwan in both image and substance. Now, this same government should immediately act to grant Taiji men what the Supreme Court defined as justice for them 15 years ago. Taiwan's ledgers should affirm the supreme principle of use. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation, Marco Respinti, and let's hope this uh, particular unideal laws plural will meet the uh, general universal uh, law of justice for the justice of Taiji Men case after those decades. And I am now passing the podium to Alessandra Amicarelli, a human rights uh, attorney in London and president of the European Federation of Freedom of Belief, who will uh, introduce the witnesses. Please. Hello, good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. Thank you, Carolina. Thank you to Massimo and Marco for the very interesting presentations. Before presenting the thesis and uh, some other videos, I would like to say something about uh, my personal experience with Taiji Man in uh, Washington, DC. I was one of the speakers of uh, um, in the panels at the International Religious Freedom Summit, dealing with the Taishiman case. Uh, we were involved in a number of meetings and conferences for officially three, but in fact, five days. And we had a chance to, not only to share views with other scholars, but also to be directly in contact with the victims. 
of the Taiwanese uh, tax office and other officers. What I really enjoyed was um, the power of the kids. Really, it was exciting to see all these young boys and girls working as volunteers for Taiji Men, assisting, helping, distributing the literature, answering questions, inviting people to join the meetings. And what I said was a real miracle of the summit was that on the 1st of July, the representative of the Taiwanese Cultural and Economic Office came down and invited members of Taiji Men to go upstairs into the offices and promised that he would hand the copy of the petition to the ambassador. So we really hope that this miracle delivers results. So it is now in the hands of the Taiwanese government to take the further step. And as I said in Washington DC, I renew my personal appeal to the president of Taiwan to make Dr. Hong ambassador of the Taiwanese culture in the world, because what Dr. Hong is doing is something that is representing Taiwan at a very high level with very good spirit and with a greater effort for humanity. We now have a very nice video um, representing some uh, interesting ceremonies, including the ceremony of the ringing of the bell, which is a very important spiritual ceremony, part of the Taiji Men tradition, which was held also in Washington DC. So we now have this video, ceremony of ringing of the bell of world peace and love from trips to Sweden, Turkey and International Religious Freedom Summit, please. There is no audio. Do other people have the audio? Because I don't. So nobody has the audio. It's, um, I'm sharing my screen and it's on my screen, but I'm not sure it's working. Um. It's somebody else who should. Uh, it's somebody else who should. Uh, our IT will share this the video, so please. Okay, so I'll just. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. hmm. The ringing of the peace bell brings hope of love and peace across Europe, Asia, and America. In June and July 2022, the Taiji Men Cultural Goodwill Group travels to Sweden, Turkey, and the United States for conferences of different topics, including environmental protection, economic development, and religious freedom. On top of that, a total of 24 leaders from business, religion, government, and non-governmental organizations ring the bell of world peace and love to pray for the world. In Sweden, during the Stockholm Plus 50 conference, 11 ministers, UN officials, and visionary leaders ring the bell to awaken people's conscience and demonstrate the bell ringer's commitment to global sustainability. The bell. It is very significant. And throughout my life, even though I'm not perfect, these three ways have always run through in my life. Conscience morality and ethics. I'm, I'm so grateful. 
Amen. And I'm so happy that I have participated in such a, a spiritually uplifting, spiritually not in the religious sense, but even if it's in the religious sense, why not? But spiritually, which is all encompassing, which lives humanity and binds us all together so that it's good to discover that there are people of conscience in this world. I'm so happy mm. today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right after Sweden, the Cultural Goodwill Group goes on to Istanbul, Turkey for the 25th Eurasian Economic Summit. Seven excellencies are invited to ring the bell, including the president of the organizer, heads of state and ministers. My idea, it is a dialogue for taking the conscience, for taking the stability, for taking the peace in the world. So we badly need the initiative like yours and I do support what you are doing because once again peace is the most important thing for everybody, you know, we cannot talk about human rights unless we have, uh, we have peace, we cannot talk about uh, culture, about promotion, anything about peace. In the end of June, faith and political leaders convene in Washington DC for the three-day International Religious Freedom Summit, the IRF Summit. Ring the bell! Here we go. During the time, Tai Chi Men invites six leaders from government and religion to ring the bell for religious freedom, justice, and peace. I just want to say thank you kindly for including me in this. We do want to encourage everybody to have the freedom to, to worship as they choose, to, to have freedom, to express their conscience, and I'm glad to be part of anything that uh, encourages that. So thank you so much. Thank you, of course. Thank you so much for the generous invitation. And again, it's wonderful to stand with you as you stand for religious freedom because it's really religious freedom for everybody or for nobody. So we don't pick winners and choosers. What we do is we all stand together and stand with each other. I must say I felt something very powerful and um, I'm very grateful for that. I really actually wish that through the miracle of technology, billions of people could have been watching us because there's a special spirit here. And I know that derives from your teachings and from your practices, but it also derives from the encompassing love that you have for all of us, the encompassing prayer and wish you have for all of us. And, um, and I think your influence will continue to be a force for good in the world. Up to July 2022, 423 leaders from 128 countries have rung the bell of peace, including 49 heads of state and governments, seven Nobel Peace Prize laureates, UN ambassadors, and world leaders from various circles. Their commitment and good intentions have spread that push forward more country actions to make our world a better place to live. Thank you very much. I hope everyone has experienced the beauty of the ceremony of the ringing of the bell, which is very spirit uplifting, as someone said in the video. We now have, as in all Taiji Men case webinars, some witnesses from the Taiji Men group that give us a practical insight of what is experienced in Taiji Men. The first witness is Miss Lili Chen, Chinese English translator and a DC of Tai Chi Men. Please, Lili, the floor is yours. Thank you, Alex. Hello, everyone. I'm very honored to have the opportunity to share my thoughts on the Tai Chi Men case on this very special occasion. 21 years ago, when I was diagnosed with cancer, I was terrified and pessimistic. After undergoing medical treatment, and resting for a while, I joined Tai Chi Men to practice Qigong. By following my Shiva's examples and teachings, I have stayed cancer-free for the past two decades. Furthermore, I used to be quite self-centered, just caring about myself and my family. Under my Shiva's guidance, I've gradually broadened my heart and horizons. I've witnessed and been inspired 
by the physical, mental, and spiritual improvement of my Taishima brothers and sisters. I have grown more courageous and willing to do volunteer work to benefit others and the world. Over the years, following my shifu and together with my brothers and sisters at Taijimen, I have participated in numerous international conferences and cultural exchange events to promote conscience, love, and peace. Just uh, as you saw in the video, in May and June of this year, I visited Sweden to attend events in association with Stockholm Plus 50, which was convened by the United Nations to promote conscience and global sustainability. I also traveled to Turkey for the 25th Eurasian Economic Summit and participated in Chesna's annual conference on religious freedom in Quebec, Canada. In late June, I also attended the International Religious Freedom Summit in Washington, DC. During these journeys, we also invited influential leaders to win the bell of world peace and love and presented the compass clock of conscience to each of the bell ringers. The clock serves as a reminder that everyone is encouraged to follow the guidance of their conscience at all times. Through the sacred and solemn ceremonies of ringing the bell, which aim to bring blessings to the world and inject more positive energy into our planet for a sustainable future, the conscience of the bell ringers and the audience members were awakened at a deeper level. Just as we saw in the video, and I would like to highlight two bell ringers. I was very impressed by what Ambassador Nancy Karigusu, Special Envoy for Maritime and Blue Economy of Kenya, what she said when she rang the bell. She said, and I quote, when you talk of the conscience, the compass, it touches my heart. And I feel somebody new, somebody different, end quote. She encouraged my shifu, Dr. Hong, and the organizations he leads to continue spreading positivity around the world because she believes it is the way of the world and the future. Another bell ringer in the video, Dr. Katrina Lento Sweat, who is the president of the Lentos Foundation for Human Rights and Justice, shared her feelings about the unique experience. She felt something very powerful and was very grateful for that. She knows that the rise from Dr. Hong's teachings, from our practices, from our love, prayer for the people of the world. And she believes our influence will continue to be a force for good in the world. In addition to the bell ring ceremonies, we also spread positive energy and messages of love and peace through cultural performances and other activities. These are just some of the examples of what Tai Chi Men has been doing and promoting. Shifu guides us in our self-betterment and teaches that Xiu Xing, the Chinese term for self-cultivation, is composed of two words. The first word, Xiu, means to correct our own mistakes and change our actions, while the second word, Xing, refers to put what we have learned and known into practice. We are encouraged to reflect on ourselves, improve ourselves, and do more good deeds to atone for our mistakes. He also inspired us to be better people through the process of doing, self-correcting, and achieving new revelations over and over again, and to share our good ideas and experiences with those around us and the world to make our planet a better place. My Shifu, Dr. Hong Daozi, and the Tai Chi Men Qigong Academy have had such wonderful impacts and contributions to the society and the world. Yet, they have been persecuted by unscrupulous officials in Taiwan for more than a quarter of a century. Today, may, may, today marks the 15th anniversary of the acquittal of the defendants in the Tai Chi Men case by the criminal division of Taiwan Supreme Court in 2007 which declared that Tai Chi Men was not guilty of a tax evasion, violation of tax codes, or any other charges. 
the fabricated and unjust case, which should have ended 15 years ago, has, however, lasted for more than a quarter of a century. Taiwan's National Taxation Bureau disregarded the Supreme Court's decision, continued to persecute Tai Chi men with ill-funded health tax bills. In August 2020, Tai Chi sacred land was illegally confiscated. This should not have happened or been tolerated in any democracy governed by the rule of law. The government of Taiwan has persecuted and nearly destroyed Tai Chi men through illegal criminal and taxation measures, seriously violating our religious freedom. This totally goes against the purpose and function of government. As Bishop Gregory Mansour in Brooklyn stated at the IRF summit in Washington, DC, that governments should ensure that all citizens have the God-given right to pursue their innermost convictions and practice their faith privately and publicly without fear. I am a Tai Chi and I love Taiwan. Today, I'm privileged to join a group of scholars and human rights activists who also love Taiwan and care about Taiwan to explore this nearly 26-year-old case. We have gathered here to urge the Taiwanese government to rectify this fabricated and unjust case, to clear our names, to return our sacred land, so that we can practice without fear of harassment and persecution by Taiwanese authorities. Redressing this case will help Taiwan raise its human rights protection to international standards, allowing Taiwan to become a country that truly values democracy, the rule of law, and human rights. Only then will Taiwan have a bright future and its people can be happy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lily. Thank you for your testimony and the very nice message of hope that you gave to everyone. And indeed, we all love Taiwan. That's why we are all here fighting for justice for Taiji men. Because both Taiji men and Taiwan need more respect and better understanding. We now have another DZ of, of Taiji Man, Miss Lin Lin, who is a brand designer in a global tech company and a DZ of Taiji Man. Please, Lin, the floor is yours. Thank you, Alex. So hello, everyone. Good day. As previously, uh, previously mentioned, we all know that Taijiman case was a sham that created out of nothing. So on this momentous day, I want to share with the topic about how the un unscrupulous prosecutor who adopted the most cruel, inhuman and degrading measure tortured my Shifu, Shimu brothers and sisters by defama uh, defamation disclosure during investigation, detention of innocent people, collusion with accomplices to create a private prosecution, illegally order local governments to cut off electricity and water supply to our academy. So at the day of search 19, December 1996, Ho Kuan Ren took my Shifu away and placed him in custody. Ho changed the places of custody six times and arranged purposely to lock my Shifu in the same room with bad tempered criminals in an attempt to threat him. In such cold winter, the new duvet prepared by us was replaced by a stink old damp one. Shifu couldn't sleep for consecutive nine nights due to the rash from old duvet. His body was red swollen and bleeding, and his legs were also swollen. He was barely able to walk with the risk of amputation. And Sifu's wife, Shinmu, worrying, came up to explain, was illegally detained by prosecutor Ho, despite she just had a surgical operation. Ho kept threatening my Shinmu that he would ex 
extradite their children who were studying abroad and force her to confess to a crime that she and Sifu didn't commit. Her wound got even worse and also due to the overwhelming experience. In order to obtain unfavorable statements against Sifu, Ho illegally summoned and detained my brothers and sisters. After a four-month investigation, by abusing his public authority, Ho filed an indictment against Sifu, Shimu, and three Dizi, falsely and absurdly accusing us of being an evil religious group. With an attempt to destroy Taijiman, Ho told the media that he was going to arrest 200 more Taijiman Dizi and threatened to investigate the 14 senior deeds in various academies through uh, across Taiwan. So Ho's abuse of power and illegal investigations not only wasted huge resources, but also subjected many of my brothers and sisters to long-term mental torture, discrimination, verbal abuse, job demotion, salary cuts, and even the termination of their marriage. One of them was misunderstood and turned against his father, break up with his family. One of them died of depression after being worried due to Ho Kwan Ren's threat to arrest 200 more people. After the pass away of my brother, his wife not only had to face the loss of her husband, but also had to take care of the entire household and look after five children how such a grief can be mended. Ho's non-stop chasing to terminate our civil and fellow deeds has been lasting for many years, which is a serious violation of international standards of human rights. What's more, the control yuan took the initiative to investigate Ho Kuan Ren and found eight major violations of the law in banding the Taijiman case and asked the Ministry of Justice should take disciplinary action against him. Nonetheless, Ho had no penalty and even got promoted to the deputy director of the Agency Against Corruption, Ministry of Justice, and recently even up to the pos position of Director General of Institute of Forensic Med Medicine, Ministry of Justice. Although it is the 15th anniversary of Taijiman acquittal, declaring us innocent of all charges. However, the Ill illegally issued tax bill never ended and the enforcement agency never stopped robbing people's property. This is the torture ongoing. If the perpetrators can't get away with it and not be held accountable, if there is no redress for such an iconic case, how the other people who have suffered from human rights abuses seek help? I was only one year old when Taijiman case happened. I really appreciate the persistence and efforts of Shifu, Shinmu, and my brothers and sisters. They survived through the severe persecution by lawless bureaucrats so that Taijiman stands and I have the opportunity to become a Taijiman Dizi. Not only did I understand the true meaning of life, but also become a practitioner of world peace, following Shifu to travel around the world to promote love, peace, and conscience. Because of awareness and belief, I've been involved in numerous human rights campaigns and tax reforms over the past 15 years just to help more people to know how to protect their rights. I've also been involved in tax and legal reform and human rights education in Taiwan. I want to stand up for voiceless victims, whether in freezing winter or burning summer, and spend my youth defending the truth. Many late nights, I sat in front of my computer and wondered why Tai Jinmen, such a wonderful cultural group, was being persecuted. Why Shifu Shimu, the best and kindest people in the world, have been subjected to inhumane torture for over a quarter of a century. However, after our land was illegally auctioned off in 2020, when everyone was disappointed, I saw that Shifu 
continue to work for human rights in Taiwan and for the world with more determination and with his and with Shimu. Furthermore, he was united all, he has united all the righteous people, ex experts, and scholars in the world to speak out against injustice and to fight for conscience. So gradually, I re realized that Taijiman case was not an incident, but a salvation. With our own blood and tears, we shine a light on the darkness, Be uh, on the darkest bureaucratic culture and injustice in Taiwan and help those who are being prosecuted but unable to voice out. They are crying in the dark and even choose to end their own lives. This is the way Tai Chi Man Dizi chooses the direction of his or her soul and where it belongs. So I really wanted to thank Shifu for teaching me about love. And I also want to thank all of the friends who fight against injustice with us, including all of you online. So thank you for the flame of conscience in your hearts, lighting up the world one by one with warmth, love, and hope. I believe that all the flames with coverage into a power, all the flames will come converge into a powerful force that will light up the darkness and turn around the destination of the world. So let's work together and continue our mission until the end of life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lynn, for your moving testimony for those who are not aware of the extent of the results of the persecution can now have a better understanding of all the consequences of the action of the public prosecutor and the other people who planned an action against Tai Chi Man, the extent of which caused very severe persecution against the Shifu, his wife, and a number of members of Tai Chi Man. Adeline, we now have um, uh, one more uh, testimony, Mr. Aaron Lee, Executive <clears throat> VP, Software Company, and uh, Tai Chi Man Deezy. Please, Aaron, the floor is yours. Hello. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Tai Chi Man Deezy working in a software technology company. Joining uh, Tai Chi Man has a great impact on my life and opened my horizons. 27 years ago, I joined Tai Chi Man because I agreed with Dr. Hong's philosophy, whether it was cultivating the mind, cultivating nature, learning how to behave and live in wisdom, or practicing Qigong or uh, strengthening uh, the body. Sufu so has give, given me great inspiration in various fields, such as outlook on life, outlook on practice, philosophy, martial arts, cultural, human rights, and taxation. I feel that Sufu is like a father accompanying a child. Through a long period of time, he set himself as an example and his life and wisdom to subtly uh, cultivate the Jesus Gong Fu. This is why we call him Sufu. Shi means a teacher, Fu means father. In traditional Chinese culture, Shi Fu is different from teacher. The Tai Chi Man case had a huge impact. First of all, it seriously hindered the development of Tai Chi Man. Many evidences show that destroying the Tai Chi Man was their goal, and any types of crime charge is just a means. At that time, the government used religion to crack down on gangsters as a purge, which affected Tai Chi Man and persecuted the freedom of belief and human rights of Tai Chi Man Sifu and Deeds. Prosecutor Ho used false witnesses and false evidence to prosecute and then joined hands with the National Taxation Bureau, NTB, to persecute Tai Chi Man for 26 years with out-of-the-box tax bills. The whole process caused great suffering to the people, and people were caught in endless cycle of administrative and judicial procedures, remedies, and petitions. 
officials use public power to purge and deceive the general public to doubt whether the object being purged really has a problem, thus creating a discriminatory atmosphere. Hegemon, Sufu, and Deeds endures in, endured a great pain and pleasure in their minds, which lasted for more than a quarter of a century. Today is the 15th anniversary of the judiciary returning the innocence to Taijiman, which was a great victory. However, due to the tax case derived from the criminal case, the NTB did not verify or voluntarily revoke it according to the judiciary result. The NTB continued to issue tax bills according to the indictment that has been abandoned by the judiciary and even illegally enforced the, the auction of people's property. For Taijiman deeds, they have fallen from extreme hope to the abyss of disappointment again and again. It is a torture of physical and mental pain again and again. This is a torture that lasts the longest and suffer the most victims in Taiwan. Today, we want to ask, all the evidence is so clear. Why doesn't the government go after prosecute Ho and the NTB who made the fraud in the first place? Instead, it has to torture the people for 26 years in terms of procedures and justice, even if everything resolved in the end but one year is left alone with the same nature and evidence as other years. And the tax bills that are completely inconsistent have been found by the Supreme Court and the Supreme Administrative Court. In the case of no tax arrears, auctions and confiscate the sacred land of practice in Taijiman. We have to ask what is the rationale? Where is legal principle? Where is the heavenly principles? The spiritual purpose of Taijiman is to nourish the positive energy within the universe and to learn from the good examples of sages in different times, which made the Taijiman case have another major impact. The Taijiman deeds did not give in. On the contrary, we have a sense of mission. What is even more amazing is that the Sufu actually turned the Taijiman case into a positive impact on the deeds. From the very big beginning, the deeds only knew to work toward the redress of the Taijiman case. However, Sufu guided the deeds to work based on the feeling of the cultivators. We don't want anyone to suffer from legal taxation anymore, and we actually promote legal taxation reform, save Taiwan with conscience, and work hard for the future of Taiwan and the world. In June and July this year, Dr. Hong led his deeds across Europe, Asia, and the Americas, and participated in summits across different fields, such as environment, economy, and religious freedom. This is a journey of peace culture that has traveled to more than 100 countries over the years. Through the bell ringing ceremony to convey a culture of peace of love and conscience, I was honored to be part of a trip to the Eurasian Economic Summit in Turkey in June, even during the pandemic. Hatred is a trigger of war. Hatred will grow when people were treated unjustly. Dr. Hong's wisdom is led at the beginning of the Taijiman case. He told his deeds to use accomplishments, use a heart, use patience, and use harmony. He told deeds to solve disputes with love and peace and wisdom. Dr. Hong taught us the Chinese character, Wu, Marshall. The right side, this one, the right side is a war and the left is the stop. So Marshall is the stop the war in, in Chinese. So the character Marshall, uh, we, we need to stop the war uh, by uh, love and peace. Therefore, we learn to practice the spirit of compassion and love to go out to the world and embrace the world. No matter what we have suffered in Taiwan, as Dr. Massimo, who was deeply moved by the Taijiman action, said, the world, is on, the world is on fire and the 
gorgeous carriage let's save the world is Dr. Hong and the Taiji Mandi is he led. So Taiji Mandi did not have time to be delayed by the Taiwan government. I can imagine that there are many tax victims or human rights victims in the world, like the victims of war. Their hatred will grow. This is caused by the imbalance of people's hearts. Only love and conscience can bring peace. I know that we can help the world. This is our mission inspired by Dr. Hong. The world needs more positive energy from Taiji Men. Today, the 15th anniversary of the Taiji Men criminal case has been rehabilitated. All the official evil deeds have been completely recorded. And the truth is very clear. I just want to look forward and hope to help Dr. Hong quickly combine forces from all walks of life to help the world. In my mind, justice and truth are already there. What remains is how the Taiwan government will face it, how to resolve it. As history is seen, this is a problem that they should solve. Only by reducing the Taiji Man case can the government truly get rid of the legacy of the authoritarian system and Taiwan's democracy, rule of law and human rights can truly be considered a big step forward. I would like to thank all of you who support Taiji Man. The world needs you and the Taiwan government also needs your righteous words and supervision to resolve the Taiji Man case as soon as possible, because this will help Taiji men move forward at full speed to help the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aaron. And anyone who wants to help Taiji men, and everyone can help Taiji men, can go online on www.taijimencase.org and sign the petition in favor of Taiji men. It's open to everyone, anywhere, anytime. It's online and very easy to reach. Thank you again, Aaron. Now we have Miss Angel Ho, who is a social media manager and the days of Tai Chi Man. Please, Angel, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Angel. I'm Tai Chi Man Dizhi. And every year, July 13th, is a highly significant day for Taiji Man Dizhi. On this date in 2007, Taiji Man was declared not guilty of fraud, tax evasion, or violation of the Tax Collection Act by the Taiwanese Supreme Court. After 10 years since Ho Kuan Ren accused Taiji Man of breaking the law in 1996, the court system has finally declared Taiji Man in innocent. This ruling is uh, very important because it not only shows that Taiji Man was innocent, in addition to demonstrating Taiwan's judicial independence, it demonstrates that Taiwan's judge adhere carefully to the human rights literacy of evidence-based judgment and protect freedom of religious belief and thought. It would appear that July 13 should be a day for Taiji men to rejoice and be proud of Taiwan's judiciary. But every time this day arrives, I continue to feel as though something is missing. And I question myself as to why. Then I discovered that it was because certain people had disregarded the court's ruling and that the law and judgment cannot be fully implemented when they are not respected and followed. In fact, it is a very simple logic. Since the Supreme Court of Taiwan already ruled in 2007, the Taijiman did not owe taxes. The National Tax Bureau should revoke the illegal tax bill derived from the criminal case in accordance to the theory of po poisonous treat and poisonous food. However, we have spent 15 years 
telling a few tax collectors in Taiwan and established fact. The court ruled that Taiji men did not owe taxes. How could the National Taxation Bureau and administrative unit ignore the Supreme Court's ruling? It legally seized Taiji men's land for more than 10 years. And in 2020, the NTB and the Administrative Enforcement Agency ignored the court's letter to stop the inference and finally jointly auction and nationalize Taiji men's land. This is a serious matter because it not only violates Taiji men's human rights, religious freedom and cultural rights, but it also seriously harms Taiwan's ju judicial dignity and the international image of freedom and democracy. It is the worst example of next generation being misled into believing that some people do not need to obey the law and of new government officials being misled into depriving people of their property and human rights for their own benefit. More importantly, um, when an injustice occurs in society, but is not rectified, people lose faith in justice and kindness. And the next generation gradually abandoned humanity kindness as a result of disappointment. We must correct errors and hold the perpetrator accountable for his actions. Only then can it be considered complete justice. And the future next generations will believe in the existence of justice and the importance of obeying the law and promote performing good deeds. This is also the second issue I want to raise when the court judged Taiji Man to be innocent on July 13, 13. We should ask who is the one to cause the unjust case? We are, who, uh, why are the perpetrators in the Taiji Man case never blamed and punished? According to the research, since 1996, when Taiji Man was wrongfully persecuted and taxes, officials have violated 49 different types of laws and 290 different laws and regulations, but none of these officials have been punished. I believe that no one can accept that the perpetrators go unpunished, even serving as senior official of government or educating the next generation in schools. If Taiwanese government officials do not face up to the harm these few officials have brought to Taiji Man and Taiwan, as well as the growing power of greed, Taiwan's situation and the living environment will become increasingly difficult. I hope the Taiwan government will take care of the next generation, correct its mistake, and demand all government officials respect court decision and safeguard Taiwan's ju ju judi judicial dignity and human rights. Today marks the 15th anniversary of the Supreme Court's decision that Taiji Man was innocent and tax free. I'm grateful to the judges who stood up to public pressure and uphill Taiji Man's innocence, which made me believe in the justice of the ju judiciary and that Taiwan is a country with freedom of thought, religion, and culture. I'm also grateful to my Sifu for steering Dizi in the right direction. When I was younger, I was disappointed and angry with Taiwan because a few officials treated us unfairly. But 
thanks to the persistence of my sifu and the brothers and sisters here, I can continue to believe in goodness and justice in the world and understand that both peace and justice must be practiced in order to exist. The Taiji Man case has attracted an increasing number of Taiwanese and foreign actors and scholars. I sincerely hope that the Taiwanese government will stand up for human rights, learn from its past mistake, harshly punish lawbreakers, uphold the ruling rendered by the Taiwan Supreme Court on July 13th, and return Taiji Man's sacred land for self cultivation. Let's cooperate to protect the rule of law, democracy, and religious freedom. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Angel. And indeed, love, peace, and freedom of religion and belief for everyone. We now have our last uh, Daisy, our last, our last witness for the day. Ms. Li Sui Tsai, former duty manager, Royal Delft in, from the Netherlands, and a Taiji man, Dees. Li Sui, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Alex, and hello, everyone. I'm Li Sui Tsai, a Dutch citizen and an international volunteer for the Association of World Citizens. For many years, I have uh, been participating in international taxpayers' rights conferences around the world. In early 2015, I became a Taiji Mandizi and practiced Qigong for my health. In December of the same year, Taiji Man brothers and sisters invited me to a human rights conference. Through the links they sent, I learned about the Taiji Man case for the first time. An unjust case of human rights persecution under the guise of criminals and taxes, which happened in 1996. It is one of the most serious judicial and taxpayers' rights violations in Taiwan. In 2005, the Control Yuan listed it as a major case of national human rights uh, protection. On July 13, 2007, the Taiwan Supreme Court declared that the Taiji Man was innocent of all charges and did not owe taxes and that Taiji Man Shu Fu and Dizi who were illegally detained also received compensation for unjust detentions and convictions from the state. However, the National Taxation Bureau continued to issue illegal tax bills and even transferred the tax bills to the administrative enforcement agency which knew the law but still violated it by performing a series of illegal actions such as illegal seizures, illegal auctions, and eventually the absurd act of forcibly taking over the Taiji Man's sacred land into national ownership. After learning about the Taiji Man case and being invited to the Human Rights Conference, I understood that this had been a domestic violence case in which the gov Taiwanese government was oppressing its people. Taiji Man Shifu and Dizu, who had been persecuted by the Taiwanese government's public power, had tried to seek justice in accordance with the law, but had not been successful to obtain the justice, human rights, and freedom of belief we deserved. But we did not give up and turned to the international community for help. My Shifu, Dr. Hong Daozi, always teaches his Dizu to distinguish correct from incorrect right from wrong and true from false. We insist in doing what is right. Living in the Netherlands without any Taiji Man Academy, I translated daily news reports and books which tell how Dr. Hong had been leading this to fight for judicial transitional justice, to promote taxpayers' rights and to fight against persecution of religion or belief. Little by little, my heart felt the teachings of this great wise man who led his deeds and acted to save sentient beings from suffering. Since then, I started to attend taxpayers' rights conferences with Shifu and other deeds. 
the sixth International Human Rights Education Conference, and the third International Conference of Taxpayers' Rights in the Netherlands. The Re uh, Region Taxpayers Forum and Europe Liber Liberty Forum in Denmark, and the Taxpayers Regional Forum in Moldova, etc. I have conquered my fear in law, taxation, and politics, and attend conferences whenever I have a chance. For many years, Taijun has been searching for the right professional human rights pioneers to learn from their knowledge and experience in order to implement Taiwan's judicial transitional justice to promote taxpayers' rights to clear the grievances of tax victims, to clear Taijun's name, and to prevent people from being bullied by public power. During the preparation of the conferences, I have gradually been refined from a person who only minded my own business and did not want to cause trouble to a world citizens with basic legal and tax knowledge who promotes international human rights education and to a Taijiman leader who, for the sake of the truth and judicial and tax justice, is fearless to speak out and tell the Taiwanese government that their mistakes should be corrected justice should be reformed immediately, and the lessons of history should be remembered so that the same mistakes and tragedies do not happen again. Before attending every conference, these who specialize in law, taxation, and accounting prepare questions for redressing the Taijiman case so that the attending deeds can interview international experts and scholars on site. After the conference, we organized the valuable information and experience collected during the conference. The whole process of preparing for the conferences is the process of my dear Shifu turning all his deeds into bodhisattvas who speak, for, who speak out for justice and save people from hardship and distress. Each deed has become the Buddhist monk, Xuanzang who traveled to India and introduced Buddhism to China. During the third international conference of taxpayers rights in the Netherlands, I interviewed Mr. Frank Joseph Haas, honorary judge of the Supreme Court of Taxation in Amsterdam. And he stated that the ruling of the Dutch Supreme Court is the final decision which will not be sent back to the taxation bureau to reissue any tax bill. 15 years ago, after the Taiwan Supreme Court ruled that Tai Jiman was not guilty of tax evasion, the NTB should have taken the initiative to revoke the illegal tax bills, but they ignored the courting's ruling and continued to illegally issue tax bills to Tai Jiman. Every time when I mentioned this to the conference participants, their jaws dropped and cannot believe that Taiwan's tax authorities overpower the judiciary and called it a wonder of the world. In the Regional Taxpayers Forum in 2000, <clears throat> 2018 in Denmark, the president of the Bavarian Taxpayers Association, Mr. Rolf von Hohenhoel, presented how German citizens fought for taxpayers' rights with their governments and kept their voice heard through various channels. Nowadays, what Tai Chi Man has learned has been put into practice. We have been holding the protest forums in front of the Taiwan's presidential office and the five yuans, rallies along the Katagalan Boulevard, street protests around Taiwan, forums in person and online forums. Editorials are published in newspapers and social media, and the human rights websites are established, such as the Act 1219 and the Tai Chi Man case. We regularly attend taxpayers' rights conferences, the yearly International Religious Freedom Summit, and forums organized by Dr. Massimo Intervenian, a renowned Italian scholar who founded a center for studies on new religions. The International Human Rights Magazine's Peter Winter and the MNN New news media revealed the Taijiman case. 
In five written reports to the United Nations Human Rights Council, international human rights organizations have accused Taiwanese government to use a tax weapon to persecute Tai Chi Man. Victory for Tai Chi Man is around the corner and the dawn of truth and justice has arrived. On this memorable July 13th, I hope that Taiwanese government will realize the full potential of democracy and bring to light the truth and justice that belonged to Tai Chi Man 15 years ago and return to Tai Chi Man at East all people care about human rights and justice, the reputation for innocence, legal rights, human rights, and the right to freedom of expression and religion or belief. The government should fulfill the promise of democratic Taiwan that recognizes and respects pluralism, religious, cultural, and spiritual diversity on the basis of the provision and the spirit of the law on this path of redressing the Tai Chi Man injustice and fighting for judicial reform, tax reform, and human rights under the guidance of my shifu, Dr. Hong Daozi, I finally realized that this is my mission as a practitioner. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Thank you very much, Lee Swift. Thank you very much for your presentation, for your testimony. And now before conclusion, we have one more video. So I kindly ask IT to launch it, uh, but we have uh, conclusions with uh, Mr. Willy Fautre, director and co-founder of Human Rights Without Frontiers Belgium. So I think we'll be concluding the session first before launching the video. Please, really, the floor is yours. Thank you, <clears throat> Alessandro. Uh, it's now the time for uh, wrapping up. And uh, of course, I, I will not sum up uh, each speaker's uh, presentation, but I will highlight uh, some specific points that uh, each of them uh, has uh, raised and that uh, all, all together give a broader picture of the, the Taiji Man case from the persecution in the 1990s uh, to the legal victory in 2007, a frustrating victory, in fact, as it has failed to uh, achieve uh, justice up to now. So, uh, Carolina Maria Hess, a researcher in the new religious movement, was in charge of the first part of uh, uh, the, the webinar. And she introduced it uh, by saying that uh, today marks the 15th anniversary of the famous decision of the Supreme Court of Taiwan declaring all the Tai Chi Man defendants innocent of all charges. The victory in court was a huge success, but contrary to predictions and common sense, unfortunately, it did not end the case of the persecution of the Taiji Man. She also insisted on not forgetting the suffering of those unjustly detained and of all Taiji Man Dizi who were slandered by the media while their leaders were in detention or awaiting a trial. Indeed, Taiji Men also continued to suffer the consequences of having been labeled as a cult by the media instigated by the prosecutor in 96, 97 and beyond. <clears throat> the <clears throat> next speaker was uh, <clears throat> scholar Massimo Intervigny. When, uh, when criminal cases become a show and prosecutors manipulate the media, the human rights of the defendants are irreparably affected, Massimo Intervigny said as the main thread of his paper. Today is the 15th anniversary of the Supreme Court decision acquitting 
the tax demand defendant of all charges, including tax evasion. However, the National Taxation Bureau refused to accept the verdict, Massimo said, and continued to issue ill-founded tax bills. Moreover, the damage caused by the media to Tajiban and the Dizzy did not stop with the court decision. Indeed, the criminal prosecution was spect spectacularized by prosecutor who, that there is no way to protect the human rights of the defendants, particularly when modern media are at work. This harmful and illegal, dangerous relations between justice and media is unfortunately a progressing trend in democratic countries, Massimo concluded. Marco was the next speaker, Marco Respinti, <clears throat> and in his introduction, he gave the direction of his intervention, and I quote him. No matter what niches exist in imperfect or even wrong human laws, the government in Taipei should immediately act to ground Taiji Men what the Supreme Court ruled 15 years ago in favor of the movement, unquote. Democracies are based on the rule of law, he said, but laws are not necessarily perfect. They are the product of trial and error, but no one is above the law, including the rulers, and maybe more specifically, the rulers. The ideal of the law is to secure to all the Taiwanese citizens the conditions to enjoy a good life. But some niches in the judicial system in Taiwan allowed the Supreme Court ruling in the last 15 years to remain unapplied, causing a large number of Taiwanese citizens, Taiji Men Shifu and Dizi, to be yet unjustly condemned to the opposite of a good life. And Marco Respinti concluded by saying that, and I quote him again, no matter what niches in, in imperfect or even long, uh, wrong laws allow unprincipled state officers to misuse unethical and unrighteous procedures damaging Taiwanese citizens and the image of Taiwan, the government in Taipei should immediately act. Then the second part was uh, chaired by <clears throat> Alessandro Amicarelli, uh, and this part, as usual, is devoted to the testimonies of the uh, Dizi, so the followers, the disciples of uh, Tai Chi Bei. Lily Chen, a Chinese and English translator, shared with us her painful experience of being diagnosed with cancer, but she managed to overcome this ordeal with a medical treatment and rest. This gave her the opportunity to have some introspection and to consider joining Tai Chi Man. She followed her Shifu's examples and teachings and since then, she has remained stayed or stayed cancer free. Furthermore, she gave up her past life when she was narrow minded, quite self centered, just caring about herself and her family. In her new life, under the Shifu's guidance, she gradually broadened her heart and horizons, participating in numerous international conferences and cultural exchange events to promote conscience, love, peace, and other positive values. <clears throat> Lin Lin, a brand designer, focused on the consequences of prosecutor who's abuse of power and illegal investigations. For example, huge resources were wasted. Many disease were subjected to long-term mental torture, discrimination, verbal abuse, job devotion, salary cuts, and even the termination of marriages. Some disease were misunderstood and turned against their fathers and their mothers, breaking up with their families. Some other disease died of a depression. 
Aaron Lee, software engineer in a technology company, <clears throat> said on the, on the day of the 15th anniversary, he said that prosecutor who and the tax administration wanted to destroy Taiji Man, even by fabricating fake evidence to be able to file illegitimate charges that have remained active uh, until now. Indeed, tax agents have persistently refused to revoke their unjust tax bills, despite the fact that Taiji Ben was acquitted from all the charges. Angel Ho, for Angel Ho, the commemoration of uh, today, 13th of July, should be a day for Taiji Ben, Shifu, and Dizi to rejoice and be proud of Taiwan's judiciary. But it's not the case. It is not the case because Prosecutor Hu and the National Tax Bureau have disregarded the court's ruling and the judgment could not be fully implemented as the NTB continued to issue tax bills going as far as auctioning property of uh, Tai Chi Wen. Last but not least, Li Shui Tsai an international uh, volunteer for AWC, a Dutch dizzy, uh, participated in the third international conference on taxpayer rights in the Netherlands. She had the opportunity to interview Mr. Frank Joseph Haas, honorary judge of the Supreme Court of Taxation in Amsterdam, about the behavior of Taiwan's National Taxation Bureau uh, in uh, disregard of the Supreme Court's ruling. The, the Dutch honorary judge stated that in the Netherlands, the ruling of the Supreme Court is always a final decision and the Taxation Bureau would not reissue any tax bill. The Dutch tax court's decision is based on taxpayers' rights, he said, and the people's success rate of administrative relief is 30 to 35%. At another conference in Denmark that she attended, the president of the Bavarian Taxpayers Association told the DZ that people must take the initiative to fight for their taxpayers' rights with the government and keep speaking out through various uh, channels. These and other meetings awakened her conscience and made her aware that her mission in Taiji Man was to fight against injustice, to fight for judicial reform, to fight for tax reform and human rights under the guidance of Dr. Hong. After this testimony, my personal conclusion is that all the dizzy should look around themselves, listen to the voice of their conscience and get the inspiration they are looking for in their quest for an ideal in Taiji Bay. Thank you very much for listening to my conclusions. And uh, I am giving you the mic back, uh, Alessandro. <laughs> Thank you very much, Willy, for the great conclusions. And we now have a final video, as anticipated. So we now conclude the oh, seminar oh, with this <laughs> video. Please, IT. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Taiwan, a magnificent island, hailed by many as a beacon of democracy in a region plagued by non-democratic regimes. Visitors to Taiwan not only appreciate its natural beauties. They visit gardens, museums, and temples, and enjoy a millennial-old Chinese culture. The rich variety of religions present in Taiwan testifies religious liberty is affirmed and protected. Yet, on December 19, 2021, 
visitors to Taipei noticed thousands of people in the streets, protesting that for 25 years they had not been protected by democracy and their right to religious liberty had been violated. In the last few years, scholars and human rights activists throughout the world have often heard the name of these protesters. Taiji Men is a menpai, similar to a school of qigong, martial arts, and self-cultivation. Dr. Hong Taozu, the Grand Master, Zhang Menren, of Taiji Men, has inherited the wisdom of esoteric Taoism and studied qigong, martial arts, medicine, yin-yang philosophy, life wisdom, and heart kung fu since a very young age. After martial law was lifted in Taiwan, he started to widely accept dizzy disciples, teaching them a path to good health and happiness. There are now 15 Tai Chi Men Academies. Dr. Hong also promoted high-profile initiatives for world peace and brought traditional Tai Chi Men culture abroad through over 3,000 cultural events and martial arts performances. Dr. Hong has visited more than 100 countries and has become a familiar figure in international peace gatherings and initiatives held at the United Nations. In 2014, Tai Chi Men was part of a coalition that launched the movement of an era of conscience. The initiative was praised by offices of the United Nations and the heads of state of several countries, with the participation of people in 200 nations, and eventually led the UN to proclaim April 5th as the International Day of Conscience. The bell sound has also a spiritual significance in many Eastern and Western religions. Dr. Hong designed and supervised the construction of the Bell of World Peace and Love, which was first rung in Singapore in the year 2000. Tai Chi Men invites world political, cultural, and religious leaders to ring them, making a wish for peace. Dr. Hong devotes a large part of his time to teach Dizzy, similar to disciples, and interview each of them before they are accepted as Dizzy. There is a traditional Tai Chi Men ceremony after the acceptance. Dizzy show their gratitude to Dr. Hong by giving gifts in the form of the so-called red envelopes to Shifu, Grand Master, as is traditional in Chinese Qigong Menpai. Everybody understands this is part of a personal relation Dizzy have with their Shifu. Several presidents and other high authorities in Taiwan have praised Tai Chi Men and Dr. Hong for their contribution to the public welfare of Taiwan and for being excellent ambassadors of Chinese culture throughout the world. Under the John Menren's leadership, Tai Chi Men has actively participated in international events, raised Taiwan's global visibility. In the future, I also hope that Tai Chi Men under Dr. Hong's leadership will continue to work with the government. That will see Taiwan. How is it possible that, at the same time, Tai Chi Men is praised and persecuted? When martial law ended in 1987, religious liberty was officially proclaimed. However, during a long post-authoritarian phase the ruling party still expected religious organizations to actively support the government. Those who didn't were persecuted. The 1996 repression targeted some of the largest religious movements in Taiwan, including the Buddhist organization F.O. Guangshan and Iguandao. Notwithstanding its caution in not taking political sides, Tai Chi Men was also involved in the crackdown, and Dr. Hong was detained together with his wife and two dizzy. Dr. Hong was falsely and ridiculously accused by a prosecutor who violated the law and abused his authority of raising goblins, a practice totally foreign to Tai Chi Men. On July 13, 2007, the criminal division of the Supreme Court of Taiwan pronounced the final acquittal of Tai Chi Men defendants, declaring them innocent of all charges. The Supreme Court also declared there was no tax evasion. National compensation for the wrongful detention was given to Dr. Hong and his co-defendants who had been detained. This should have been the end of the Tai Chi Men case. However, they tried to maintain their tax bills for the years 1991 to 1996, claiming that the money Dr. Hong had received in these years in the red envelopes should not be considered as non-taxable gifts, but as tuition fees for a so-called cram school a school where pupils receive crash courses, normally in preparation for exams. Different authorities intervened in the controversy, including the Ministry of Education, which has authority on cram schools and courts of law. All declared that in the Tai Chi Men case there was no cram school and no tax evasion. For the second time, the Tai Chi Men case should have ended there, but this did not happen. In 2019, the NTB, 
in accordance with the ruling of the Supreme Administrative Court and the Taipei High Administrative Court, agreed that tax bills for the years 1991 and 1993 to 1996 should be corrected to zero, but maintained the tax bill for 1992, including penalties. Logically, this did not make sense, as the content of the red envelopes in 1992 was not different from the other years. In this case, the verdict of the criminal section of the Supreme Court of 2007 that found Dr. Hong and Tai Ji Men not guilty of tax evasion. Nonetheless, the NTB refused to cancel the tax bill for 1992. On May 5 and July 23, 2020, the Taipei High Administrative Court wrote twice to the NTB for the central area, asking them to treat 1992 as the other years were treated. This also was to no avail. In August 2020, land belonging to Dr. Hong that had been seized was auctioned by the National Enforcement Agency, then confiscated after two auctions were not successful. This property was important for Tai Ji Men, which planned to build a center for self-cultivation on what they consider a sacred land. Hence the protests, which also targeted what Tai Ji men and others perceived as the unfairness of the Taiwanese tax system in general, and the immoral system of bonuses. Why did the Tai Ji men case last longer with respect to other groups that had been involved in the 1996 crackdown on spiritual movements, and in fact is still not solved after more than 25 years? One answer is that, Tai Ji men refused to compromise with the NTB. By settling, they would have admitted that they had been guilty of tax evasion, something that is both against their principles and factual truth. Ultimately, the Tai Ji men cases and protests are not about taxes or money. They are about freedom of religion or belief. Tai Ji men was not raided in 1996 and persecuted ever since, because the authorities really suspected it was guilty of tax evasion. In fact, in 2021, a sensational testimony emerged proving that those who started the Tai Ji Men case knew that the accusation of tax evasion was fabricated. In a video, the late tax collector Shi Yusheng was heard confessing that prosecutor Ho Kwan Jen, the main instigator of the persecution of Tai Ji Men, told him to lie to fabricate a false tax case against Dr. Hong and the movement. <laughs> <laughs> Why was the lie fabricated? The root cause was the attempt to destroy a spiritual movement that taught its disciples to think with their own heads. Authoritarian bureaucrats and corrupt officials are always afraid of those who dare think independently and follow their own conscience. This is also why thousands in the word admire and respect Dr. Hong and Tai Ji Men. This is why hundreds of scholars and human rights activists support the Tai Ji Men cause. This is why the case of Tai Ji Men was repeatedly denounced in international forums, including at the United Nations. In June 2021, we brought to attention to the human rights Council the case of the Tai Ji Men. We denounce how the tax weapon was used to arm Tai Ji Men. In September, at the 88th Human Rights Council session, we renew our appeal for Tai Ji Men. This time, we highlighted the confiscation of this Tai Ji Men place of worship by the Taiwanese government. Those in Taiwan who believe this protest will simply go away with the passing of time are wrong. Protests have now lasted for more than 25 years. As the title of a book about the case suggests, the youth of more than one generation has been stolen, as they had to spend their best years asking time and again for a justice denied. But they did not give up. Generation after generation of Tai Ji men will continue to fight until the case is solved. More and more in the world will support them. In this sense, we are all Tai Ji men. Thank you very much.
that's all. Okay.